geography of Texas can be divided up into four main regions. Of these four region, regions, each one can then be divided into smaller regions. The first region we're going to look at are the mountains and basins. This is located in far west Texas. It is a very rugged land. One of its main features are mountain ranges and peaks. The mountains and basins region has the highest elevation in the state. There are seven mountains in it over 8,000 feet tall. Of these, we also have the three main ranges in Texas, the Guadalupe Mountains, the Davis Mountains, and the Chisos Mountains. In these, in the, specifically the Guadalupe Mountains, Guadalupe Peak is the highest point in Texas at 8,667 feet high. The mountains and basins is also a very hot, dry climate. The Chihuahuan Desert covers much of the mountains and basins region. The entire area is affected by a lack of rain and hot temperatures. The plants and animals have adapted to this hot, dry climate. The plants are mainly ones that require little water, such as cactus, yucca, and creosote bushes. The animals have also adapted to this. It is populated by elk, mule deer, cougars, javelinas, rattlesnakes, and other animals that thrive in a desert climate. Several specific natural landmarks are prominent in the mountains and basins region. The first of which is the Rio Grande River. This is a major source of life for all things living in the mountains and basins. The water is used for irrigation of crops and through agriculture for the people living in the community. The river also provides water for businesses and factories. It provides water for livestock. There's lots of ranching in the area. Uh, all of the major cities are built along the Rio Grande River, specifically El Paso. And the Rio Grande also serves as a natural border between Texas and Mexico. The other major natural landmark in the mountains and basins region is Big Bend National Park. As the Rio Grande curves in West Texas, this area becomes known as the Big Bend. The park is the state's first national park. It is 1,250 square miles making it one of the largest national parks in the United States. It is a major area for hiking, camping, rock climbing, and rafting. The cities and places and resources in the mountains and basins is dominated by El Paso. El Paso is the largest city in the mountains and basins region. It is the furthest west city in Texas. It has very strong economic ties with Mexico, specifically because of NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, that was signed in the 90s that allowed trade between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. As a result, there is a lot of business that moves back and forth between Mexico and the United States through El Paso, making El Paso one of the busiest border crossings in America. A feature of NAFTA in this border crossing are what are known as Macleodoras. These are factories in Mexico that are owned by American companies that then assemble parts made in the United States for finished products that are then sold in the United States. Small towns are the theme of the rest of the cities in the mountains and basins region. The arid dry climate affects population. One of the key features of the mountains and basins region is that it has the largest counties in Texas, but also has some of the smallest populations. An example of this is Mentone, Texas. The town has a population of 19 people, yet it is also the county seat of Loving County. Resources, it has oil, natural gas, limestone, and copper. The next region is the Great Plains region. This is also includes what is known as the Panhandle of Texas. The Great Plains extend from northern Texas all the way up throughout the middle part of the United States. What again is affectionately known as the Great Plains in the United States. This area is a sea of grass. It stretches from Canada to the northern Texas. It's a very fertile land. It's known as the breadbasket of the world. Uh, wheat and corn are some major crops grown throughout the Great Plains of the United States. In Texas, the land was once covered with bison and nomadic Native American groups, similar to the rest of the Great Plains in the United States. Farmers have since plowed up this native ground, planted corn and wheat, and changed the ecology of the region. In the Texas Panhandle, oil and gas has been a major part of the economy in the 20th century to go along with agriculture. 
and one of the more famous events in the Great Plains, not just for northern Texas, but all of the United States, was the Dust Bowl in the 1930s, when drought combined with the Great Depression combined with poor farming techniques created massive dust storms. The climate of the Great Plains is a very dry region. Its elevation is higher than that of East Texas, but not as high as the mountains and basins. As a result, they get very little rain, and they're forced to use dryland farming and the Ogallala Aquifer as sources of water for their agriculture. A part of the Great Plains region in Texas is the High Plains. This is the northern part of the region in Texas. The landscape and rivers are great flat expanses of land. Uh, again, what is known as the Great American Desert or a sea of grass or phrases you'll hear to describe the High Plains. Two major rivers in this area are the Canadian River, uh, which is the northernmost major river in Texas, and the Red River, which serves as the boundary between Texas and Oklahoma, but then flows into the panhandle of Texas. Also, another major feature of the High Plains is Paladuro Canyon. Paladuro Canyon is the second largest canyon in the United States behind the Grand Canyon in Arizona. Just below the High Plains are the North and South Plains. This region is divided up with the North Plains. You see an area of oil, farming, and cattle ranching around Amarillo. And in the South Plains, you have the Lubbock area, which is dominated by cotton. At the bottom of the South Plains is the Permian Basin oil field, which is one of the largest, most productive oil fields in the world. Furthermore, in the Great Plains area is the Edwards Plateau. This is the area between the Rio Grande and the South Texas Plains. The land here is thin soil, very scrub brush, lots of mesquite trees. Uh, there's not a lot of agriculture there, of growing of crops. Instead, the Edwards Plateau is a prominent part for ranching uh, with lots of cattle, but also sheep and goats. Uh, this is the area is a major producer of a mohair of goat hair and also sheep. Uh, a part of the Edwards Plateau is the hill country of Texas. Fredericksburg is probably one of the more famous cities in the hill country, <clears throat> settled by German immigrants. And then you have the Llano Basin. Here are two major rivers, the Colorado River and the Llano River, come together. They are uh, have had dams built along the Colorado River throughout the early part of the 20th century, creating a series of lakes that provide water for the towns in the area. So we've seen a growth of towns in this area. Uh, the economy of the Llano Basin is tourism. It's a major part of it, but also hunting and livestock production. Uh, deer hunting is a major part of this area. The third region of Texas now, as we continue to move east, is the North Central Plains. This is a cliff-bound region. Hills and valleys with grasses, brush, and small trees dominate the area. It gets a little bit more rain than the Great Plains. So as we move east, the amount of rain increases. It is a very rural area with low population. Uh, cattle ranching and some farming dominate the North Central Plains. In it, you have an area known as the Rolling Plains. This is the largest area of the region. Its climate, terrain, and economy are very dry. Lots of grass, scrub plants, lots of hills and mesas. Uh, the economy is trade, business, there's some ranching, uh, you, some oil, some natural gas. It's not as prominent as the Permian Basin. In the Rolling Plains, the major cities you see are Wichita Falls at the northern part, Abilene is a part of the Rolling Plains, and then San Angelo. Continuing to move east within the North Central Plains, we come across what are known as the Cross Timbers and the Grand Prairie area. These two areas that used to be heavily forested uh, with a plain between them, so the heavily forested area was known as the Cross Timbers, with the plain being the Grand Prairie. In the Cross Timbers area, timberland and the timber industry was a main part of the economy. These are traditional trees, native trees such as live oaks and pecans, which were used for lumber early on in Texas history. 
now most of this region has become uh, farming and ranching. And in the cross timbers, you see cities such as Brownwood and Arlington. In between is the Grand Prairie. This is a, a, a area of tall grasses with ranching and crops of which Fort Worth, whose economy originally was dominated by the cattle industry with the stockyards located there. Uh, and so it's in that area that you will see the Grand Prairie, this flat land. The final area and the biggest region is the coastal plains. These cover from almost all of East Texas down along the Gulf Coast, all the way down into South Texas. Again, it is the state's largest ge geographic region and it contains the biggest cities and the majority of the state's population. Because of its relative location to the Gulf of Mexico, the coastal plains has a hot and humid climate. It is a very coastal climate. Winds from the Gulf of Mexico deliver rain to the region. The resources here in East Texas you have the pine wood forests, you have good soil for agriculture, specifically cotton, uh, livestock. In East Texas, we had our, some of our first major oil fields, specifically Spindletop in 1901, which is credited with starting the Texas oil boom. In the coastal plain, as you move west, you have the next little subregion known as the Blackland Prairie. This is the area around Dallas, which is the third largest city in Texas. It is a major cotton growing area. Uh, it is also Dallas is a major center for business, technology, and finances. Moving south through the Blackland Prairie, other cities are San Antonio, which is the second largest in Texas. Uh, it has military bases, tourism, as well as other industries have grown up there. And then Austin, which is the capital of Texas. Moving further south and east from there, you come into the Post Oak Belt. The Post Oak Belt is rather interesting. There's really uh, not a lot of large cities. Uh, you have some agriculture, some farming, some ranching, but this strip of land is dominated by sort of smaller areas, op more open spaces. Uh, the biggest cities in the Post Oak Belt are Tyler and College Station. On the far east side of Texas, you have what's known as the Piney Woods region of Texas. Uh, something just known as the Piney Woods. This is along the Texas-Louisiana border and it is a major wooded area of which the lumber industry is the dominant industry there. It has had oil, it has had agriculture. The agriculture in, the, in East Texas is more focused on food crops than we saw the cotton of West Texas. Uh, but this Texas lumber industry is one of the major, four major traditional industries in Texas. The big cities in the Piney Woods are Nacogdoches and Texarkana. Another geographic feature of the Piney Woods is the Big Thicket National Preserve. And then moving south along the coast you run into the Gulf Coast and South Texas Plains. In the Gulf Coast we have Houston which is the largest city in Texas. Uh, it is a major shipping city uh, a lot of trade comes through Houston. It is also a major oil city uh, going along the Gulf Coast from Houston all the way over to Port Arthur and Beaumont on the Louisiana border is a major oil center for Texas that Houston has sometimes been referred to as oil city because of the money that has come through there on oil. When you get to the furthest south part of the coastal plains, you come to the South Texas Plains. This is also known as the Lower Rio Grande Valley that the Lower Rio Grande Valley is a major agricultural producer, specifically of food crops. Uh, it has what is known as alluvial soil. Alluvial soil is rich soil that has minerals deposited by flowing river water. So the rivers will overflow and deposit their the dirt and sediment in the land. And when they recede, that provides more minerals. So it allows good crops because this area is further south it has a warmer temperature and crops can grow there that can't grow in other parts of the state. So, uh, an example of this agriculture is citrus trees. Texas, specifically with the ruby red grapefruits, is a major producer of grapefruits and oranges, producing even more grapefruits and oranges than Florida 
for whom that's part of their symbol, but Texas is an even bigger producer of those citrus crops. With that, those are the four main regions of Texas. Again, that geography is going to influence the climate, the temperature, the soil, the economic opportunities are going to influence how people live and what they're going to do with their lives, which will then influence the flow of history.